When we discussed kinetic energy before, we discussed it in the context of linear motion, and therefore we had kinetic energy equal to one-half mv squared, and sometimes we refer to it as linear kinetic energy or translational kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy describes the excess energy that an object possesses because of its linear motion. But it has nothing to do with rotational motion. And so we need to define a new kinetic energy called rotational kinetic energy that is going to measure the excess energy that an object possesses because of its rotation. And that kinetic energy is the rotational equivalent, if you will, of the linear kinetic energy. Because if you take one half mv squared and you try to translate that over to the rotational world, well, one half is a half, and then instead of mass, you have moment of inertia, and then instead of v squared, you have omega squared, because omega describes rotational motion. So we have a new kinetic energy, which is called the rotational kinetic energy, and only describes rotational motion. So one half i omega squared only accounts for the rotational part, for the linear part or the translational part, k is equal to one half mv squared is what we're going to use. Now we'll see how all that ties together when we talk about the kinetic energy of rolling, but for now let's just do a quick example to illustrate the kinetic energy due to rotational motion. So if we take this cylinder here that has a certain mass, a certain radius, and is spinning at constant angular speed 100 radians per second, we're simply going to compute the rotational kinetic energy just to see how it works. Pretty straightforward, nothing complicated in this example. K rotational is one half I delta omega squared. Now delta is the axis of rotation, and you want omega to be measured with respect to the same axis of rotation so that you have like terms in this expression. So now you have one half times the moment of inertia of a cylinder. Now you could look that up, but that's one half mr squared. A lot of times it's just given times omega squared, and so that's going to be a half times a half times 10 times 0.5 squared multiplied by 100 squared. And that's going to give us a rotational kinetic energy equal to 6,250. And of course, it's in joules because it's still an energy. It's just a different type of kinetic energy, but nonetheless still an energy and therefore still expressed in joules. So pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of being careful now that we have to identify specifically what type of motion we're dealing with. If it's linear motion, we use one half mv squared. If it's rotational motion, one half i omega squared. If it's rolling, we will use both, but we'll talk about that in a separate video. Thanks for watching this video. We created Cogverse Academy to help you save time by focusing on what matters most when studying for exams. If you'd like to learn how Cogverse Academy can personally help you improve your grades, check us out at cogverseacademy.com and send us an email if you have any questions. We'd love to help you.